Good evening, brothers and sisters. God bless you all. I'd like to extend a special and cordial greeting with much love and affection to all that are joining us in this live stream of our church, of the Church of God, Ministry of Jesus Christ International. It gives us so much joy to be able to continue sharing, for we continue strong. We continue filled with happiness and joy because God is our happiness. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. We continue seeking the Lord with fervor, with understanding, with devotion. So I ask, so I invite you, brothers and sisters, as we feel happiness because we do. Amen. Who, which of you feel happiness and joy in your hearts? Absolutely. We all do. We all feel happiness and joy because it's time for this wonderful service. And it gives us with so much joy and happiness, glory and praise be to the Lord. So I invite you so that with full willingness, reverence, and respect. Let us present this service, this moment, this very special moment to our God in prayer. Let us pray, brothers and sisters. Father of heaven, O oh, mighty heavenly Father, the omnipotent Father, the omnipotent one, how great is your name. How great is your excellence and your glory, O oh Lord. It gives us so much happiness, my Lord. And we feel so much bliss in our hearts when it's time, when it's time for these wonderful services, because we know that through them we will continue learning more of you, O oh Lord. And as we sing to you and as we call upon you, we will feel your presence, more of your Holy Spirit, more of that divine strength that comes from above, that comes from up high. And as we read and as we learn more of your divine word, we will have that knowledge and understanding, O oh Lord, that it gives our souls so much happiness and joy. It gives us as believers so much happiness because as we connect to this live stream, we remember that this is our hope. This is a, an incentive, a motive, the motivation of our soul. It's to be able to enjoy your manifestation in our lives and in our hearts. And with happiness and joy, oh Lord, we want to dedicate this service to you, my Lord, asking you, oh Lord, that to manifest yourself, to be with us tonight, for we want to feel your presence. We ask, oh Lord, that your most sweet and precious manifestation come to our lives, oh Lord. And we ask, oh Lord, that everyone that is that has joined us in this live stream tonight can enjoy and receive your blessing as well, my Lord. And we ask, we express, and we pray for all these things, oh Lord. Because this service and this gathering is for the praise and worship of your name. And so we ask, oh Lord, for all these things in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the glory and praise be always to our God. And let us do a reading, brothers and sisters, just as we are. Let us read in Psalms, Psalm 146. This beautiful passage reminds us that we are not alone. It re this precious passage here in the Bible and motivates us. It encourages us to continue forward. It reminds us that God is great and that he is mindful of his people. Glory and praise be to the Lord. And let's... Read starting in verse 1, Psalm 146, for the glory and praise of our God. Praise the Lord, O soul of mine. Praise the Lord. Well, while I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man in whom there is no help. Verse number 4. His spirit departs. He returns to his earth. In that very day, his plans perish. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and the widow. But the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May the glory and praise be always to our God. Please be seated, brothers and sisters. And I invite you with full happiness, with hearts filled with joy, to sing hymns to praise and glorify the Lord. Because through our song, 
God will bless us when we sing to the Lord with understanding, with knowledge, feeling, and reflecting on every word on these lyrics. There will be blessings for us all. Praises to the Lord. So let's start by singing hymn number 60, which reminds us that our lives belong to God. I am thine, O Lord. Let's sing to the Lord, brothers and sisters. Praise you, O Lord. We bless you and we glorify you, O Lord. May the praise be always to our God. And let us also sing hymn number 71. It's a beautiful hymn as well. And again, with lots of joy and fervor, it teaches us in a great way what a son and daughter of God must do. We must be a good testimony for others. We must always behave accordingly because through our behavior, through our actions, we also praise the Lord. And this hymn is titled, Right in the Corner Where You Are. And let's sing to the Lord with even more joy. Do not wait until something of greatness you may do. Do not wait to shed your light afar. To the many duties that 
bless you, O Heavenly Father. We bless you, O Lord. We give you our glory. How great and precious is the name of our God. Brothers and sisters, we must, if we have to highlight one of the many and wonderful things that happens that happen in our church, one of them could be the beautiful way in which God convinces each and every one of us because he grants us individual experiences, individual blessings. Each one of us has one or even many testimonies to share. Glory to the Lord. And it's because God exists. It's because he is powerful. It's because he is in our midst, a living God, a powerful God. Praise and glory be to our Heavenly Father. Recently, a sister testified, and let's meditate on this wonderful testimony. And it happened during the pandemic, during this pandemic we're all going through. And at, uh, around April, she was able to find the job because she had been praying to God for it. It wasn't easy for her. It wasn't easy to find a job in the midst of a pandemic. And her necessity was even greater. And this crisis in April was particularly severe. And so finally, her sister ha had a job. And what she was told is, well, what I, what I want you to know is that this will only be a temporary job because you are replacing and covering someone who has been given leave of absence, but that person will come back. Do you accept? And our sister said, sure, absolutely. I want to work. And so months went by and the day, the day was coming when she was going to be let go. She was counting the days and she knew that she was going to lose her job, to lose her job. But she, what she did was she would pray to the Lord every day. And she would say to the Lord, Lord, you know, my commitments, you know, my responsibilities, you know what I need, you know, my responsibility with my family. And I know that you will not leave me without a job. And she would praise the Lord and thank him and glorify him. And so when the day finally came, when it came to, turn her position over to the person she was replacing and as she prepared everything that she needed to she even had a she had a chance to say goodbye to her co-workers because the time had come but her superiors at the very last minute called her back and said look don't leave please don't leave not yet yes the person who you whom you were replacing already came back but she surprised us with something quite astonishing she told us that a few years a few just a few days ago she was able to uh, retire and so she came to uh, to thank us and to and she came to and she came to give uh give us the position so it's wonderful it's wonderful to see god in our midst glory to god he's there for us and our sister was blessed thusly so let us rise and let us rise and give thanks to the lord and let's do so with all our hearts and i invite you brothers and sisters to give thanks to the Lord. But additionally, let us all together with faith, with all our love, with all our affection, add to ask the Lord for this pandemic and for the world, for the, for, the, for the global crisis we are all experiencing. And just as we have learned, if we all pray with faith, with fervor, the Lord will surely and very shortly answer our prayers. And the many promises that he has uttered and spoken through Sister Maria Lisa will come to pass. Glory to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, God of endless mercy, he gives us so much joy. It fills our hearts with so much happiness to know that if we are here enjoying this live stream, it's because we have been blessed by you, O Lord. It's because we have felt your presence in our lives. If we are here today of sharing this wonderful service, even virtually, it's because we know with full certainty that you exist, that you are real, that you are the one and only God, a God who exists, who is real, who is powerful, who performs miracles and wonders, who manifests himself in our lives, who has had mercy on us. And you have blessed us so much, O oh Lord. You have done so in such a beautiful way, and it's wonderful to see how you have, haven't forgotten us. So we ask, O oh Lord, that you attend to our prayers, that you answer our pleas, O oh Lord, because you provide for us, because you sustain us, O oh Lord, and you give us triumph and victory day after day and grant us the, the, the desires of our hearts, the things that we pray for. You also bless us with the spiritual, with your doctrine, with all the experiences, dreams, and revelations that you grant us, O oh Lord, my Lord. And it is a privilege to be a part of this church. It's wonderful to know that in the midst of these difficult times, we are not alone, but you are with us. Hallelujah. Praise be the Lord. 
And that is why we thank you, my Lord. We thank you all together. And through our prayer, we we want you to know the same thing. We want you to know that we are grateful, O oh Lord, because you have always been there for us. You have always provided, provided for us. You have always supported us, my Lord. And you have always taken care of us, my Lord. We also want to pray and ask for your church. And my Lord, we thank you for your doctrine, for your gospel, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh Lord, for these wonderful privileges, for these wonderful privileges and blessings, O oh Lord, that you grant us through our worldwide leader of the church, Sister Mary Luisa. So we thank you, my Lord. And together, as one man, as the scripture says, with one desire, with one accord, my Lord, we want to pray and ask for this pandemic, for this current global crisis oh lord and we ask oh lord that you have mercy to have mercy on us my lord for you are the sheep of your flock my lord we are your church oh heavenly father so we ask oh lord that you stop this pandemic that you end this crisis because you have said that you will bless us my lord and let us go back to 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 the normal lord let us let things go back to normal oh lord as you have promised so that we can have stability in all aspects of our lives, my Lord. But most importantly, what we yearn for the most and what fills us with most happiness and joy, Lord, which you know is to be able to congregate, my Lord. We want your church locations to open again. We want to we want to have that privilege. We ask, oh Lord, that you let us enjoy this once again. So we pray so that you manifest yourself with great power, so that you extend your mighty hand to bless us, oh Lord. And we express, we pray, and plead for all these things in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the honor and glory be always to our God, to our Redeemer. So let's continue, brothers and sisters. The same joy and happiness that it gives us to, uh, to praise, that it gives us uh, when we praise the Lord. Let's sing chorus 92. And it's a chorus that, that reaffirms our faith, our certainty, because it reminds us of the existence, of the true existence of God in our lives. Praise and glory be to the Lord. It says, Almighty God, I know you are with me. Hit chorus 92. Let's sing with all our hearts. glorify your name may the glory be always to our god god is always with us brothers and sisters and even now in these times it helps us cherish and and, and makes us cherish these live streams even more so we'd like to remind everyone let's never forget to click like on all the videos that we upload into the church's youtube channel be it sermons reflections or testimonies and let's meditate on them to prepare ourselves for the kingdom uh, for the kingdom of heaven and to continue progressing in our spiritual lives as well as receiving all the blessings that god gives us through all these live streams and videos additionally Besides subscribing, we encourage you to activate notifications and so that you can also uh, share the links of these videos with your friends, your family, and your loved ones. 
so that we can continue extending the, and expanding the gospel of our God. Glory and praise be to the Lord. Let's sing one more chorus, brothers and sisters. Chorus 102, if my people's hearts are humbled. And let's sing this chorus, brothers and sisters, and bless the name of our God. For God, brothers and sisters, the time is here. The wonderful moment that we were all expecting, so uh, that we're all yearning for. Let's continue enjoying the gospel of the of the kingdom of heaven and the word of our God. And it gives me a lot of joy and happiness to live in the company of the worldwide head pastor of the church, Brother Carlos Alberto Baena. God bless you all, brothers and sisters. Brothers, good evening and sisters. Good, good evening. God bless you all. I feel very joyful, very happy to see you and spend with you all this afternoon. Blessed is the name of our Lord. You may take your seats. I would like to share with you, to start off, a testimony of a sister who congregates with us and she has neighbors who were telling her that they had worries because it wasn't raining and because of that reason they were going to lose their harvest of watermelon that they had and and so their concern was that they were going to lose that it was really great concern so they told them no we have to trust in the lord but at that time, they answered, I mean, we have all our rituals and superstitions ready so it doesn't, so it, it, it rains. But she persuaded them and evangelized them. She put in a teaching everything that our sister Maria Luisa has been teaching us lately, which has been so very beautiful regarding turning away from superstitions. And she convinced them and said, no, let's pray to the Lord because God is powerful. God is going to hear our prayers. She taught them how to pray so that they would ask the Lord to send the rain. And also, she started to send them the links or all the material of the church with the Bible studies, the sermons of the church, and so on, the reflections. And so these people began to see all this material, to listen to it, and to pray to the Lord, but it was very, the, the Lord's answer was really quick because it started to rain so much that their harvest was huge, their crops. It was so large that it was double what they had projected. And they're so grateful with the Lord that they said, we still haven't attended the church, but we're already watching the live streams. And because of this harvest God gave us, we're going to give our tithes to God and we're going to stay in the church because God has worked a great miracle in our lives and today they are happy joining us in all these live streams. Blessed is the name of the Lord. That's one testimony. The other one, the other testimony also has to do with something that a person asked me and said, all right, there was a sermon where you taught about greed and covetousness and so you're teaching that greed 
uh, or covetousness is when you want to have what other people have and, or uh, greed is when you want to attain something that it's unattainable. And this person was telling me, but if you have goals in life and you have longings and you have dreams to attain, and is that a sin? And I answered about that, that it isn't. People, we all can we all can have dreams or goals and we all can have longings in our hearts and we can ask the Lord to grant those things to us. Especially if it's God's will to give us those blessings, then ask him to, uh, to give them to us. Or at any rate, we should also have common sense that if you're going to ask the Lord, for example, or God promises you a car, then a, a greedy person might think to have the, the, the most expensive car ever. So in that case, there, there's greed. But if God promised you a car, perhaps you should think not about having the most expensive car because we wouldn't have how to afford it. We couldn't afford it. And so what if God gives us a car that is expensive? Then just the, the repairs alone, the parts are very expensive. We can't afford them any any kind of damage done to it it makes it very difficult to maintain those kinds of vehicles so we should apply common sense we should always think those things and think like that and say well if god promised me a car I'm wonderful i'm going to ask for him but I, to, that he gives me a car that i'm able to maintain one that i have enough in, uh, income so that i'm able to maintain it and purchase whatever it needs a part to not have any problems, maybe when I, when I have to pay uh, taxes. So that's what we wanted to teach, and that's what we want to teach, for us to be realistic and to, be, to have common sense. Because what, go what does, good does it do to you for you to ask things that first are unattainable and perhaps you will never get them? And so you become frustrated. And second, you cannot maintain them. You cannot administer them or manage them later. You end up exceeding, you go going over the top. The, the, the main, main key item is not going over the top. Let's have dreams, let's have desires or, or goals, but let's not go over the top. And when it comes to our request, petitions to God. Now, if God wants to give us a blessing that exceeds our own strength that's the will of the lord and that's also wonderful whatever god decides and if god gives us that blessing which it seems unattainable it is because we are going to have the ability to administer it and we're going to have the ability to get to maintain it uh, properly for example a few days ago someone was a sister was telling us that she received a promise from the holy spirit which was that he was going to give her a house and she prayed to the lord and said lord i want you to give me that house just as you decide and she lived she was renting a, home, a a room in a home and that is a beautiful house and she said to the lord she said to the lord lord a house just like this one that's what she said that's what she prayed to the lord and the holy spirit told her do not go into debt that is also something important about not going getting debt greater than you what you can afford just so that you can get things you can attain rather according to what you're able to pay, according to what you're able to afford, if you have a credit, for instance, or a mortgage. In this case, the Holy Spirit told her, do not get in debt. What happened? She obeyed the Lord. What was the, uh, how did it unfold? That the owner of the home where she was uh, living, where she was renting a room, told her, I am going to have to move to another city and I'm going to give you this home to you for free. Can, do you accept it as a gift? So that is how the g prayer was fulfilled just like this home and that's how God want, intended to give it to her and in that case we can we can we prove that the promises of the Holy Spirit the prophecies also dream, dreams and longings they all come true within God's plan but we must always have common sense not go over the top and that is wisdom for God to grant them to us glory to the name of the Lord all right let us rise we are going to read in our Bibles let us read in second Corinthians New Testament, we are going to read 2 Corinthians. Let us read in chapter number 5. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. We're going to read in verse 
Number 12. Only 12. We will read for the honor and glory of the Lord. For we do not command ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. You may take your sheets. Today we are going to teach about hypocrisy, and that is the title of the sermon. Why? Because the Bible talks about hypocrisy a lot. The Bible teaches us in various passages. For example, there's one in James that says, Wisdom from on high is first peaceful, kind, and in the end it states, with, without hypocrisy. That's what James teaches us. Or Peter, it tells us, casting aside all malice and, and hypocrisy. That's why it is important to learn what it means, what hypocrisy means, and we should turn away. There are many passages in the Bible also, in the Gospels, where the Lord told the Pharisees, he, told them, he called them hypocrites. And he gave them examples of, of why he was calling them hypocrites. Generally speaking, hypocrisy, it's what we just read here in verse number 12 at the end. It says that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. People who are hypocrites are people who appear or pretend to have holiness, appear or pretend to be dedicated to God, but in reality they are people who do not put into practice the Lord's commandments. These are people who put an appearance. And that initial concept is the one we are going to elaborate on because hypocrisy has several meanings, but that's the meaning that we we deem at this moment uh, paramount to highlight. A person who pretends to be dedicated to God and be holy and dedicated and seek the Lord very much. But in reality, if this is a person who's leading up an unrighteous life, who's, who's a liar, who's, who's false, who is double-minded, a person who pretends, a person who appears to be something, but it, he is not that. And so that's sad. Sad, but we would not like to be in that and those ta part of those tears as our sister Maria Luisa was teaching us past, this past Sunday because that those are the tears and it is a sin to pretend but in the face of other people being dedicated to God when in reality the, when true the end of the day person is living a, a, a sinful life that's why the apostle the apostle Paul said that he found that phenomenon in the church of the Corinthians which has the spiritual gifts they prophesied there, but there were people back then who boasted and did things for people to see them and for the sake of be, having some notoriety or for people to praise them. And he, they just pretended. It says that they boasted in appearance. It was just an appearance. They boasted in appearance and not in heart because in the in the long run, their hearts were was far from God. Their hearts were empty. Their hearts were filled with sin. They were filled with bad actions. And that is what the apostle wanted to say, that they were hypocrite people and that there was hypocrisy in that congregation and that when there's hypocrisy, there are no blessings when there's hypocrisy much less will the Holy Spirit give spiritual gifts to people and much less will he support them when it comes to ministering the spiritual gifts. For example, the gift of prophecy, which we need, which it requires the person to have all those qualities and for the person to be striving to please God and to attain perfection so that in that way God may support that, those prophecies and laying on of hands. We are going to read now in our Bibles in Isaiah chapter number 58. And it teaches us in the Old Testament about this topic, about hypocrisy, with an example of fasting. Because the Lord reproached these people who would start to fast, to do fastings, and in reality, these people, the Bible says in Isaiah 58, 5, 
that these people were presented their fastings where the, you could only see an appearance and they would only do it for people for other people to see them verse 5 states is it a fast that i is it a fast that i have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul is it to bow down his head like a bulrush meaning to pray for people to see them and bow down and to spread out sackcloth and ashes also with a kind of material that was dark in color and it caused an itch in your body. It was uncomfortable. It was a, a material that was rough and ashes, also ashes. And everything was just to put an appearance, to put on an appearance of that being dedicated to God and on a, putting on an appearance of seeking God. But in reality, this was just hypocrisy because these people verse number three states in the end that they were exploiting all their work laborers and you can exploit all your laborers he said also in verse number six he said is it not the fast that i have chosen to lose the bonds of wickedness to undo the heavy burdens they oppress their workers it states to let the oppressed go free verse number seven states why instead rather than just presenting a fast first share your bread with the hungry and when it comes to the poor who are cast out help them whoever is naked just give him something to cover himself and he, g he gave these examples to tell us and point out that it was just an appearance and nothing else and so we are going to read in the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter number 23. Matthew 23 gives us, he gives us several examples the Lord Jesus Christ did. And so in, in, in all these examples, he said that the Pharisees, the scribes, all these people who back then just pretended to be people who were dedicated to God and the people who claimed to know the law of Moses, they were the ones who did things just for the sake of appearing uh, to be holy and dedicated to God. And in, in, the, in, in the long run, their hearts were avoided of God. Matthew then, as I repeat, ver chapter 23, verse number 14, he gives them th this example. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. He, there he is. He's talking to them about hypocr hypocrisy. He's calling them hypocrites. For you devour widows' house, meaning they took advantage of the fact that the widows didn't have a husband, so they would fi find them in a situation where they were defenseless, and so they would take advantage of them to take away their properties or whatever they owned, and for a pretense, make long prayers. And so they were always pretending to be dedicated to God, but in reality, they didn't have anything. That Therefore, you will receive greater condemnation. He gave them another example of verse 15. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you travel land and sea to win one proselyte. What is it? What is a proselyte? A proselyte is a follower, a person who they evangelized. And when he is one, meaning once the person has was already evangelized or a follower, when they won him over, someone wanted to follow the path of God, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. Why? Because you start to teach, they start to teach them with their bad example. And so these people, as days go by, they see that the person who taught them is someone who leads a right, unrighteous life, and that person is also going to start to repeat that bad example. Let us also read in verse number 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. He calls them hypocrites again. For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin. And these were seeds that were, well, cumin. These were, or plants that were rather small. And they were really focused on tithing, what, even the smallest. But these people would cast aside what was the most important of the law and neglected the weighter matters, meaning justice, mercy, and faith. And that is what the Lord wanted them to do, to have in their hearts those qualities. But these people were only focused on pretending um, to others that they were very dedicated, very uh, dedicated to love to the Lord, that they loved God, that they gave their tithe, that they presented long prayers, that they fasted, that they 
they came to the temple, to the, to the gatherings, but these people in reality had their hearts far from God. That is hypocrisy that back then existed and today can also exist. And we should be careful, very careful of this, because, for example, of us showing our families that we are always paying attention to all the things of the Lord, but it ter- as it turns out, that the word of God still has not caused an example, uh, uh, had an effect on our lives. And so we must be very careful with this. And so, because he says, you are who lead the blind, but they didn't teach anything. You didn't have any moral authority. And then, for that reason, they were uh, blind. Who they, bl- they led the blind because they were people who not strain out a gnat and they, they swallow a camel, meaning they wanted to s- simulate or pretend that they were dedicated to God. But in reality, these people swallowed a, a camel, meaning they paid so much attention to the gnat, but they swallowed a camel because these were people who didn't have a heart for God, but they they were sinning. And that is why the Lord Jesus Christ said in the Psalms, I do not want to be a, walk alongside the hypocrite because the hypocrite sins. And the hypocrite may talk about God, but in reality, that person is leading a sinful life in the sight of God. And that's where we must be really careful because we are seeking the Lord. We are reading the Bible. We are you know, tuning into these live streams and we are paying attention to watching the testimonies on the website of the church. We are paying attention also to all the reflections. But what's going to happen? We read the Bible, we sing and so on and so forth, seeking the Lord. But if we do not change, then that's just going to be hypocrisy. And that's just going to be something in the sight of God, as it states here, as the Bible says, it states here, hypocrisy on our behalf, because we have, we do not change. We do things and everybody says, oh, look at how dedicated my cousin, my aunt, how dedicated he or she is and how they seek God. Look at how they pray. They're always praising God. Yeah, but it, the person doesn't have a change of life. The person is... Uh, just showing envy and always engaged in uh, arguments and the person is, is setting a bad example to his children, not leading his marriage well. So that's a hypocrite because the person that pretends to seek God, but there's no change of life. And so that's a hypocrite. And we must be very be aware of hypocr- hypocrisy because note how harsh the Lord was. With, when it came to all these uh, uh, scribes and Pharisees and called them hypocrites because that was the word. And also, verse number 25, rather, he states, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. The scribes were the ones who wrote down all the things of the law of Moses and the, and the, uh, and the rolls. And they, were, they knew how it arrived. And they were always paying attention to all the things the prophets had prophesied. And the Pharisees were the ones who had been instructed in the law of Moses, and supposedly they knew all the law of Moses, but they had only retained that aspect of of pretending and giving man uh, the chance to uh, uh, praise them, but their hearts were far from God. And verse number 25 states, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you cleanse the outside of the cup, and dish, meaning they paid attention to all that. The cup on the outside has to be clean, but when it, when push came to shove, what matter was that was inside of the fool. Inside, in this case, it was full of extortion and self-indulgence, which represents their lives, their hearts, because they were thieves. They took away things from other people. They would con people. They were liars. They took advantage of people. And they took advantage of their their positions. The fact that people trusted them and they were unfair. And this is why the Lord called them hypocrites. We, today, for the, fact, the mere fact that we come to church, we, we must beware 
that whoever is in the church, it is because he wants to serve, see, follow God. Whoever is tuning into these live streams, it is because he wants to be transformed, because he wants to be a good testimony, because he wants to change, truly change, not just for, for the sake of, of, of spending your time, but the, because the person wants to flee from hypocrisy. And now we are going to read verse number 27. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Imagine how many things the, the Lord told them, called them hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs. Meaning on the outside, they were painted over to pretend to be holy. On It says uh, that appear beautiful outwardly, meaning to be beautiful on the outside. And that's what we're highlighting with uh, with. A hypocrisy on the outside it's just an appearance but in the inside there's no change of life but inside are full of dead men's bones imagine the lord the kinds of examples he gave them they were full of man's bones dead men's bones and all uncleanness this is what the how the lord sees people who are hypocrites and it is something that's rather sad and it is something that sh covers everyone because we've been teaching about sin. We've been looking at different types of sins. We already know that all of these are these are tares and no one wants to be tares, right? No one. We all want to be wheat. Agreed? We all want to be wheat. But with when it, when it comes to hypocrisy, it's something in general because it is a person who is committing all those secret, secret sins and is only pretending to, to be dedicated to God. But in reality... His life is a life of sin. It's so sad. For the Lord, this is a hypocrite. And he also added in verse number 28, Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men. Appear, again, an appearance. Uh, outwardly appear righteous to men, that you're righteous, that you're very holy, that you do not commit sin. But inside you are full of what? Hypocrisy. So that's the title of the sermon. Just nothing but an outward appearance. And on, in our case, the uh, the appearance is what, they, what we were talking about. People see you reading the Bible, see you singing, see you, they see you praying, they see you watching the live streams. But you are still having those bad behaviors at, at home or at, at work with your, your neighbors, being a bad testimony. And for God, whoever does this is, an, uh, is a hypocrite. And... That is hypocrisy, and that is to be double-minded. And it's very sad. The Lord rejected this quite harshly. In fact, verse number 29, he, and they say things that they're not going to do in the long run. Everything is just out of mouth, lip service. Oh, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Because you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous. Meaning, they would go to the monuments where the prophets had been buried. Their own fathers had killed the prophets, and yet they would go to the tombs to bring offerings and to present their, tri their tribute or decoration to those prophets who had been killed. And they said, oh, if I had lived at that time, I would have done that. But turned out that it was just nothing but live service. That's hypocrisy because they would have done the same thing. Likewise, they would have killed them because they, they wouldn't have endured them. They wouldn't have endured the prophecies from the prophets when, when, it, when they were rebuking them as they did with their fathers. Uh, and as in antiquity, when they call, they whenever they said spoke the truth, they killed him. Let's just remember what happened with John the Baptist. When John the Baptist rebuked Herod over his sin, immediately they had him killed just because he called out the king on his sin. So that was the situation. Verse number thirty states, and say, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Lies. That's not like that's not true because it was simply just for the sake of pretending that they valued the prophets, but uh, but in their hearts they had not. It was not true because it was just fake. A hypocrite person is fake. Now we are going to see hypocrisy from another vantage point, and we're going to view it not only as those who pretend, but also 
those who at that time started would start to impose on others commands. So they want other people to comply with things and be holy, but they're but they're, they're not holy, and yet they do demand and impose a whole bunch of burdens. And in this second definition, they would impose many traditions and they were demanding uh, to others and that is also a trait of someone who's hypocrite is demanding everyone to, to fulfill things but he does not comply with anything and so that is also something that happens in life and and here they just filled them with burdens and commandments of man Guidelines they came up with only to their own uh, suiting. So because they were the, the scribes and Pharisees, they started to just tailor their own laws to their liking and their own guidelines. Not the guidelines God had approved in the law of Moses, but rather the ones that suited them. Because they, since they didn't comply with any of it, since then they just started to come up with their own guidelines and traditions. And they that would allow them to control other people, force other people, demand others, but they didn't do anything, nor did they comply with anything. So we're going to read in Matthew chapter 15 concerning these commandments of men that were not the law of men, of, of Moses, but just their inventions. Today this also exists. And the, the and religions have come up with all sorts of commandments, things that God didn't teach. And that's why we, we feel joyful and we're happy because the Holy Spirit teaches us in the church. He teaches us each one. He gives us commandments and he teaches us according to what we need. And this is a great blessing whenever the Holy Spirit teaches us through prophecy. Also in visions, in dreams and with the doctrine. When our sister Mary Louisa teaches us, for example, we learn the doctrine and that doctrine is something the Holy Spirit has taught with all the experiences that that has gone on for over 50 years. And so these are not commandments of man, nor are they traditions, but rather the teachings that the Holy Spirit himself gives us, which is something that is truly beautiful. And so Matthew states, chapter 15, verse number 1. Then the scribes and Pharisees who were, were, were from Jerusalem came to Jesus saying, they were always there, why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? So they were always talking about the traditions, but at no po point whatsoever did the law of Moses talk about tradition. Tradition was commandments of men, commandments they come up, came up with, not God's commandments, but commandments of man. For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread, and so they had already turned turned into a law the, it was a tradition and that it was a commandment of man that before they ate bread they had to wash their hands and then the, the disciples of the Lord um, maybe that day they didn't do it but so to their eyes they were worried just to, just about that for them to wa wash their hands so whoever washed their hands was holy and was perfect but in reality it is something that has nothing to do with perfection because neither saves nor condemns you. It doesn't take you, doesn't give you. It's something for your health. But it doesn't have to do with the holiness. And so they were just there judging and it was trying to see who washed their hands, who didn't wash their hands. So that was their thing to, to, be, to pay attention about, uh, to everyone to see who made a mistake. Uh, for them to see, oh, this person doesn't have any holiness today. Perhaps someone who's trying to see who makes a mistake in thing, uh, with things that really have no transcendence. Verse 3, he answered and said to them, why do you... The Lord just said to them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God? Because of your tradition. Because their tradition and the commandment, the commandment of God, rather, the law of Moses, was more important, much more important than the tradition that, that were commandments of man. A commandment of God was much more important that they were complying with the commandments of God. Yet, they were always looking at other people, looking and seeing if they can comply with the commandments of man or not, and not the commandments of God. And in addition, they didn't even comply with the commandments of God. Verse 4, For God commanded, saying, Honor your father and your mother, and he who curses 
father or mother, let him be put to death. That, that was God's commandment, not a commandment of man. That's what the Lord Jesus said. But you say, whoever says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me as a gift to God, meaning they were not helping their, their parents, but rather they changed it and they tailored it to, to, uh, to whatever extent I'm able to, just so that they wouldn't really f comply with what God had commanded, that it was a responsibility of their children to watch after their parents. They had adapted God's commandment to their own uh, human commandment. And, so, and they said, in, so verse 6 says, Then he need not honor his father or mother. The Lord Jesus Christ told him, Thou as you have made the commandment of God, of no effect by your tradition. When he said, by your tradition, it is the same as saying a commandment of man. Repeat. I repeat that God, they said, whatever I can help you with, that's it. And they would just forget about their parents. No, they were to, to protect their parents and watch after them. That was the responsibility. We also have that responsibility with our parents today. And verse number seven states, hypocrites, again. Well, did Isaiah prophesy about you saying, I think, and I believe you might share this, that if the Lord might look at us like, like that and say, no, my, my son or my daughter is a hypocrite. I'm sure the Lord sees us like that as hypocrites. It's just that it, it you really get scared and it's afraid of that word. It shocks you. But that's the way it's written in the Bible and it exists. The Bible says, depart from hypocrisy. And the Lord told them right away, you're hypocrites. Because they were always tailoring things to their own suiting. And the same thing today. Think people who tailor the prophecies to, what conv to their convenience. They interpret it their own way so that... All, so that they can change God's commandments, not to comply with what God has established. For example, people who, instead of being responsible in their, in their you know, marital spouse, they have two, three, four people who are they're going out, they're dating, and in prophecy they say, "Oh, God told me in prophecy that He was going to help me, that He was going to give me victory in life, and that I." that I have his support. And so the person has read in the Bible that, that that behavior is incorrect, and yet, because the Holy Spirit has not addressed that specifically, that custom or that habit of having dating several women at the same time, then it doesn't change. Well, that's hypocrisy. That's a hypocrite who behaves hip with hypocrisy because that person has read the Bible that it shouldn't be that, done that way. Now, nevertheless, they behave that way and say, oh, the Holy Spirit and prophecy has not talked to me about that. He, since he hasn't told me this, then I'm just going to keep dating two, three women at the same time. There's no problem. That That's being a hypocrite. And so he said in verse number eight, the it was a prophecy from the prophet Isaiah. It says, hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying these people draw near to me with their mouth, just their mouth, honoring God, honoring God with their lips, hypocrites, but their hearts is far from me. Pretending, but their hearts are far from God, and they and in vain they worship me, because those prayers, will God will never hear them. And we've heard, we've learned that when a prayer, God doesn't hear it, teaching his doctrines, the commandments of man. The doctrine is what's composed of God's commandments. And here, to them, the doctrine was the one that was composed of man's command, commandments of man. And that's fake. That's false. So now, let us read another passage about the same topic. Let us read Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. It teaches us about the commandments of man. Luke chapter 12, verse number 1. Here it teaches us about the leaven that our sister Mary Louisa was teaching us this past Sunday about leaven. And she was teaching us that the kingdom of heaven was similar like a, a woman who mixed uh, the, the, the flour with leaven and that it grew, that, uh, that dough grew. And that that meant the evangelization and the preaching of the gospel and that every day the gospel will spread around the nations. And that that's the leaven in a positive sense. But here we're going to highlight a kind of leaven that negatively in another context that it's the other meaning it has. This leaven referred to 
all the things that the Pharisees and the, and the scribes who were hypocrites, what they were teaching, which were false doctrines, because those were commandments of man, because there was nothing but traditions and nothing but teachings that were tailored to what to their own convenience. And that was hypocrisy, and that was leaven. And it was a, 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 a bad leaven, not a good kind of leaven that we've already explained, which is the preaching of the gospel, but rather this leaven was evil because it was just a bad example, because it was you being false apostles and, or preachers who were fraudulent. And he, t he taught it here, verse 1, In the meantime, when an innumerable multitude of people had gathered together so that they trampled one another, he began to say to his disciples, first of all, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. It is very clear. The, the leaven they were teaching, all the doctrines and the commandments of man, was called hypocrisy, which is the, the second meaning we are highlighting tonight. We already saw the first meaning, which was to pretend not doing the things of God. The second meaning we highlight is imposing commandments and burdens onto people and demand people things and uh, from, th from people things. That's the commandment of man and not a commandment of God. And that is a leaven. That is the leaven of hypocrisy. Le the bad kind of leaven. Something that's artificial that truly destroys. Also, let us read about this same topic in Matthew 23. Matthew 23, chapter number 1. The Bible here teaches us in Matthew 23 about the, the traditions of man, about these false teachings. It states, Matthew 23, verse number 1. Then Jesus spoke to, mul to multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. They sat every Saturday to teach it, to teach the law of Moses, and they pretended to be holy and that they were teaching everything that had to do about the law of Moses. That's why it says in Moses' seat, they were teaching it every Sabbath. Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe, that observe and do. You have to do everything that's in the law of Moses, God's commandments. But do not do according to their works. The, whose works? The works of the scribes and the Pharisees. Do not do according to their works. For they say and what? And do not do. That's it. They say and do not do. That is hypocrisy. They say many things. They teach many things. But they don't do anything they teach. For they bind heavy burdens. That, those are the commandments of man, the traditions, the requirements, their demands. For they bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on man's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. And that is something that today, for example, there are religions that say that it is for marriage is forbidden. There are religions that say who impose those sorts of things that range. I mean, they impose a whole bunch of demands and requirements and prohibitions. And it makes it so that people feel oppressed and that they can't do things that are, are not a sin for God, but those religions are based in, on commandments of man, and it makes people to be unhappy. And they f argue that their teachings uh, on demanding from others, com complying and observing those commandments of man, which is what, this, what it's, he said here, for they bind, says, they bind heavy burdens, hard to bear. They demand things from people that, things that today, are no longer applicable because they were belong to the law of Moses and today they require people to still comply with those. So these are burdens for people and people suffer because of that. And then they were demand and they require and they control them. And yet, in, in truth, it doesn't have to do anything with a spiritual life or eternal life. So now we are also going to read now a third meaning of what hypocrisy is. In this third meaning... We are going to see the way how in addition to 
putting burdens of people. They were also judging people all the time. They were always paying attention to judge people and to point the finger who had committed a sin or who had made a mistake. Let us see in Luke chapter number 13. Luke chapter number 13. This can happen to us as well. There may be people who are always trying to see what mistakes you made. And we must be careful with this because we today could also make that mis that same mistake. Paying attention to everyone, demanding people, requiring them, accusing them, and telling them that they're sinning. Turns out that in our case, we do, do not look at our own sin. And so when you start to say or, de or demand people think to themselves well, why is he requiring what is this guy talking to me about he doesn't have any more moral authority that bothers people D different when people have real moral authority when a person is well behaved when a person sets a good example when a person really shows an excellent testimony and if that person reprimands the other the other person will receive it really well but if the person is not leading a good life, then that is a hypocrite. The other person will say, this is such a hypocrite. He's coming here to reprimand me. That's what people say and think. So you must be really careful. We as believers and as followers of the Lord, we must be very careful whenever we say something to someone. Why do you behave like this? Why did you do that? Why did you do this? And why did you answer? Why did you say? And why, why, why? Always sort of scolding people and not having moral authority. So that is a hypocrisy. People will say, I know his life and how he behaves. I know what his sins are. And why is he going to tell me anything for me to correct my life? So we must be careful because that is hypocrisy. Whenever we have or are leading uh, you know a, a spotless life then we can start telling people but if we don't then it's better to let God transform everyone and for God to help us help each one for everyone to, to, to transform to be transformed little by little so Luke 13 states let us read Luke 13 verse number 10 now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath and behold there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over, and could no way raise herself up. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and he said to her, Women, you are loosed from your infirmity. He did that on the Sabbath, which was a day of rest. He laid her hands, it says, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. God healed, the Lord healed her. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath because they were only paying attention to see what the Lord made wrong, did wrong and they were only paying attention to if it was a Sabbath but not whether people needed the benefits or people are were suffering or not being merciful not get, lending a hand and helping one in need but they were only paying attention for people to see them that they were controlling everything the day of Sabbath and the fasting and the prayer and when they see what's seen but in the in the at the bottom they didn't have a spiritual life so he said and he approached the Lord with indignation. I mean, he, he, when it says indignation, this is envy. Because envy is ang indignation and anger. Because the Lord had healed that woman. And he said, he said to the crowd, There are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore come and be healed on them. And not on the Sabbath day. What did the Lord say to him? At verse 15, And the Lord answered him and said, Hypocrite! He called him right away, hypocrite, because that's how God sees it. Why? Because th what were they doing? They, each, each of you says, each of you come, I mean, you come here to tell me that I shouldn't heal this woman. If you, when your ox or your donkey, even if on the, it's on the Sabbath, you take it to the to water it. You do that because they're your own oxen and donkeys. What's it, your convenience? But when you see me helping this woman, then you come to me and are rigorous and of the with the law, and I have to observe everything. Yet you do not do it. So that is a hypocrisy. That happens in life so much. It happens everywhere. You find people all everywhere. 
scolding you on things and they don't do that one which they are scolding you on and they're judging you all the time and pointing the finger and they don't do anything. That's what you find in life. People who are hypocrites. That's the definition of hypocrisy and we must be aware of this because it is a sin. It is that those are tears. It is unpleasant before the Lord. And it is unpleasant not only for those of us who come to church, but but also to everyone. Because it happens everywhere. It is like a vice or a habit people have of pointing a finger, pointing, pointing, and pointing a finger. You, and you did this, and you did that, but I don't. But they are not doing anything. The law doesn't apply to them. Law, the law applies to everyone else, but not to me, they say. So here, version number... 15, as we read, the Lord answered him and said, Hypocrite, does not eat one of each one of you the on the Sabbath lose? Meaning they were doing it. His oxen or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it. You do that. And then you don't let me come and help this person. So ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, which was the other thing they said, oh, we're the children of it, we're the sons of Abraham. John the Baptist called, said, said things to them, who taught you to flee from the coming wrath? of the Lord, the punishment because of your sins, because of your works. And they said, no, we are the sons of Abraham. So they they shielded by, behind that on appearance, but didn't do the works. And so they said, if you were the children of, of Abraham, you wouldn't do the sins, you wouldn't commit the sins you're committing because Abraham was a man of faith, but with works because he didn't sin. So it's that's, that's how it is. It has to be coherent. And so in verse number... 16, he said, So will not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan is bound 17 years, for 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath? When he said these things, they all they all were put to shame. And that was rebuking the wicked one. Not telling him, I rebuke you, Satan, but with his words. They were they rebuked him and he was telling him, Why do you do it and not and tell me not to do it? So also at a certain point in life, if according to the situation, you could also answer people and rebuke them or reprim or uh, admonish them politely, but make them reflect. You're telling me this, yet have you noticed whether you're doing it? Perhaps you could say it. You should also think, think it through whether the situation warrants it. But in this, we have this lesson. The Lord did it and he rebuked these people and they were put to shame because that's how it is. People must also learn and that's how that's the way the Lord taught them. And he gave us this lesson. And so when he said these things, verse 17, all his adversaries were put to shame and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. And for example, I say in a married couple, if there's a married couple, one of the one of them, the spouse demands things from the other, but the other the sp the one's party doesn't give it so whenever the time comes the husband could say i i see that you t you demand many things from me but you don't do this or the same way she tells him you tell me to do this but you don't do these other things when the time is right when the um, you know the, you have the mood and the climate to talk otherwise it is a hypocrisy so it is a lesson for us to bear it in mind also let us read in romans chapter number two romans chapter two it teaches us here, the Bible does, Romans 2, the Apostle Paul was reflecting thusly. Romans 2, verse number 17. And you can see the way the Apostle was telling them. And he was saying, indeed, he was talking to the Jews and all these people who were uh, scholars of the law and knew the scripture, but didn't do put them into practice. Indeed, you are called a Jew and rest on the law, meaning they they relied on the law and it was just an appearance and make your boast in God and know his will and approve the things that are excellent being instructed out of the law and are confident that you are yourself are a guide to the blind, lie to those who are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes having the form of knowledge and, and truth in the law. You therefore who teach another do not teach yourself. Just imagine, look at that question. Meaning you teach other people, you don't teach yourself. Like the person who prophesies is also whoever's prophesying. If the person's prophesying to someone to, to be faithful, then the person who's prophesying must, must also learn that for God is very important. Faithfulness is important to God. If, the, if you prophesy about honesty, the prophesier must be honest. Whoever's teaching, preaching, or teaching someone, whatever the person's saying, the, the person must do. Otherwise, it is a hypocrite. You who say... 
You who preach that a man should not steal, do you steal? You who say, do not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who make your boast in the law, do you dishonor God through breaking the law? That, that was the reflection of the Apostle Paul, hypocrisy. And it is a very, very beautiful reflection. And then, with, as it pertains to this, uh, uh, judging other people, which is something that abounds, and not looking at yourself, this passage in Luke 6, which is a passage we all know, which is the speck and the plank. The person who starts to look the speck in the, in the other person's eye, but he has a plank that's gigantic in his, in his own eye, he doesn't see it. Yet he's also, he's paying attention to the little plank, the little speck rather, and the other one to judge the person, but he doesn't look at the big plank he has in his own eye. So he said in Luke chapter number 6, verse 42, he said, the Lord said, Or how can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove the speck that is in your eye, when you yourself do not see the plank that is in your eyes. Hypocrite! First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will clearly see to remove the speck that is in your brother's eye. And thereafter, he explained it very beautifully, the following verses. But this example is something is one we all know and we must always rem remember. So we're going to see a fourth meaning or a fourth way of seeing hypocrisy. This hypocrisy happens when we say hello to our brothers and sisters or the people or other people, but we pretend and we pretend to love them, but we do not love them. Or we either hate them or we reject them or we if I have we hold a grudge or we have anger against them and we say hello to them and we smile and we laugh and we're happy and have a conversation but when the conversation is over since everything was just a pretend then we're going to go away to criticize that person or or use say gossips about them and slander whoever does that is a hypocrite in sight of god and that's why the lord taught us that before we go to the altar to present yourself at the altar. Perhaps people see, see you at the altar praising God, raising your hands like that before the Lord. If you had any quarrel with your with someone, go and be reconciled to your brother to, to him so that when he came back and did that, it is because the person was truly cleansed and had a pure heart. And today that happens a lot. We must beware of this because it is an obstacle for our spiritual life, starting with marriage. Whenever, for example, someone, the, 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 the spouses are offending each other, the husband mistreats the wife or the wife mistreats the husband, then that, then the person goes and kneels down to pray to the Lord and the, says that there's already a hindrance, that it, their prayers will be hindered. But when we are in congregations and we're all praising God or raising our hands towards the heaven and then people pretend to be dedicated to God, in reality, if the person is having those behaviors, the person's really leading an unrighteous life before God, that is a hypocrite, and that's how God sees that person. So we're going to read what the Lord, Matthew chapter 5 teaches us. Matthew 5, the Bible tells us, Matthew chapter 5, it states in verse number 23. Matthew 5, 23. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there you remember that your brother is something against you, Leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your own your gift. That's very clear. That's what we ought to do. And instead of kneeling down and putting your offering, God won't accept it. Go first, be reconciled, fix everything, ask for forgiveness, and take that out of your heart. Be cleansed and then... Kneel down and raise your hands toward the heavens and present your offering to God. So that is another way of seeing hypocrisy of which we must flee. And we're going to see the last way of looking at hypocrisy, which is seeking God out of material a material interest. And in Jeremiah 7, we're going to read. And so... We were seeking God just for God to give us a, a job. We're seeking God just so that God will give us material things. But 
Truly, no, because not not truly because we desire to change the way we live or forsake our vices, uh, the pleasures of the flesh, the pleasures of the world, changes to our way of living. No, and that is hypocrisy because we only care about material things. God give us a job. God give us giving us a healing. God um, protecting our children only for something over something fleeting, just to, for him to give us car, money, house, but nothing else. So Jeremiah 7 states the word that came to Jeremiah verse 1 from the Lord saying, stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, hear the word of the Lord, all of you of Judah who enter in, at, at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place because they were going there, but they were just sinning. And so the Lord were, was very upset with all this. And then in the end, he tells them, he said in verse 6, And if you do not oppress the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, or walk after other gods to hurt, to, to your hurt, then, it, then if you lead a good life, then I will cause you to dwell in the place and the land that I gave your fathers forever and ever. Otherwise, you are hypocrites. Same thing goes for John 6, where the Lord told them, You came here only because I fed you, not because you love me. That's also hypocrisy. John 6, we are going to read verse number 26. The Lord said to them when he fed them all, he said, he said in verse number 25, and then when they found him on the other side, they said, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, most assuredly, say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled so that's why they were seeking him. Today, what might happen? That people are, we could say, gathered with us only so to receive a material benefit, but they don't care about changing their life. Whoever does that is uh, harboring hypocrisy. And whoever is attending the church and is also coming to church to receive prophecy, he is a hypocrite as well, or she is a hypocrite as well. Whoever is not converted to God, there's a person who was saying a few days ago, saying, I, during the pandemic, I realized that I had not, I have not converted to God, that I was going to church only for the sake of receiving prophecy. So I think it's very beautiful for the person to have understood this. I think it's beautiful, but it is it's useful for us to teach it. If the person only comes to the congregation just to receive prophecy for God to speak things about material things, things that are good, that's a hypocrite. And that's how God sees that person as a hypocrite. And so the person is wasting his time. So we must be, we already know, we already know that cannot happen. We are here to please God, to flee from sin, not to be tares to cleanse ourselves, to be, to perfect ourselves, to be better, to be a good testimony for the Lord, to be happy with the love we have for him, to love God. That's why we're here in the church, to love him and to worship him. And what to do with hypocrisy? What we ought to do, the contrary to hypocrisy, is being sincere. And what to do so that we do not live in hypocrisy? A hypocrite never acknowledges his own sin, but... The antidote against hypocrisy is acknowledging your sin, confessing your sin. So let us read 1 John, and with this we'll finish. 1 John chapter number 3. 1 John 1, rather, verse number 9. This is what we ought to do for us to flee from hypocrisy. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's what we ought to do. That is... That is the step we must take for us to examine ourselves and say, yes, I made a mistake. I acknowledge I made a mistake this. I made a, I, I acknowledge this is a sin. I acknowledge that I am envious. I acknowledge that I am someone 
who is prideful, I am uh, selfish, I am greedy, I'm covetous, whatever it is, and say to the Lord, Lord, I am covetous, I am greedy, I am prideful, uh, everything, everything, anything, whatever it may be, and say to the Lord, we are learning the doctrine that is in the Bible, it, it, all the teachings are there, all the sins, and say to the Lord what our sin is, and say, I'm a hypocrite because I am only seeking you, but I still can do these things. I'm a hypocrite. I ask you to please cleanse me, as the Bible states here. Cleanse me from this unrighteousness because I am a hypocrite with you and I want to be sincere. I want to be whole with you. That is what the Lord wants us to do. Let us rise and we are going to pray to the Lord to ask him to help us attain, reach this goal and also to give us healing, the liberation, the deliverance rather, give us a spiritual life that is better for him every day. Blessed is his name. Lord of glory, we want to thank you with all our heart, all your blessings. We love you. We praise you. Lord, we want to flee from hypocrisy. I think that the, mo the saddest thing there can be is that you, for you to look at us as though we are hypocrites. We don't want to be hypocrites. We want to acknowledge in your sight our sins, our flaws, our mistakes. Lord, cleanse us, perfect us, and help us so that we may be sincere and able to tell you things by their name, by their exact name, with the sin that we have in our lives, so that in that way, Lord, you may cleanse us from, every, from hypocrisy, and that in that way, Lord, we may put your word into practice, O oh God of glory. Thank you, Lord, for your endless love, for the church, for our sister Maria Luisa, for your people, for all those who are joining us. And out of all those who are coming, turn them, make them very sincere, dedicated to you, want to love you, follow you, and not only follow you out of financial interest. At any rate, Lord, we beg you that you, for us to serve you, for us to minister your things, and for us to every day, Lord, be at your service of your plan, of your purpose. We need physical healing, spiritual healing. May you remove witchcraft, sorcerers, cursors, curses from the evil, setbacks, any setback in our lives. Likewise, may you bless us as it pertains to delivering us from spirits of, of illness and that you give us heal, healing so that we, Lord, with spiritual healing and a physical healing, may serve you, go on and progress for you to become perfect towards a spiritual, a beautiful spiritual life of God of glory. May you hear our prayers. And may you remove any obstacle, any danger, any evil around in our lives. And may you, O oh God of glory, bless us also with our material life. And you provide us with jobs and that you help us with everything we need, Lord. Help your people. Help all those who are watching this live stream. Whatever request they have for you, however difficult it is, help them, Lord, at this time. That what they're asking you, may they receive it and may they enjoy it with, according to your will and your plan. Because we know that your blessing and your will is good perfect and pleasant we love you we worship you with all our heart lord you are our life and our happiness thank you beloved god blessed is your name forever and ever praised and glorified is in the name of our lord jesus christ amen glory to god we are going to sing brothers and sisters chorus number 109 jesus loosens the bonds of sin chorus 109 thank you lord
Glory to God. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Great is our God. Great is our Lord, the living God. Blessed and praised forever and ever. Big hug to you all. May God bless you. May God keep you and grant you the best. So long. Glory to the name of the Lord. Thank you.